Yo, it's Bo. Welcome back to Kerbal Space Program. Previously on Kerbal Star Frontiers, we made the two and a half Kerbal light year journey out to the red dwarf system Aethera, where we've been exploring its inner planets. And we've landed on four so far. Last episode, we were able to establish a surface base on Tesher, the dust storm world that's probably the most habitable candidate for a colony in the Aethera system. But that brings us in orbit around Tesher with the mothership. We're going to leave the surface base personnel on the planet while we go explore the rest of the planets in the Aethera system. We're going to be setting a course for Iores, which is the furthest planet in the system. It's like a super Kerbin or super Earth type planet, meaning it has higher gravity than Kerbin. It has like 1.6 Gs and the atmosphere is only about 80% thick, meaning it's going to be a little bit more difficult to land and return from the surface. And we're going to be doing so next week with an SSTO that I have designed specifically for the Iora's atmosphere, but I'll show that later. Here we are. We've just escaped the sphere of influence of Tesher, or I guess we're on track to escape. And we're flying past the Terminator and uh, on the night side, leaving the sphere of influence of the planet. You can see some of the other planets in the background as well as one of the comets that uh, is pretty dominant in the skies of Aethera. But now that we're in a solar orbit, or I guess an Aethera orbit, we're going to be setting Iores as our target and performing an inclination match maneuver to make sure that we're on the same plane. It's going to make an encounter easier. So now that we've got that matched, I can work on doing a prograde maneuver out to the altitude of Iores and then just rotate around until I find a spot where I'm encountering Iora's about at my apoapsis. That's going to be probably the most efficient transfer spot. And one thing you might notice about the Aethera system is that all the orbits are orbiting in the retrograde direction from uh, the reference of how the planets orbit in the Kerbal system, the home system of KSP. That's just how it is. Some star systems might have different orbital directions, but all of the planets in this system are orbiting retrograde with the exception of the comets. But here we are, we have our flyby through the Iores system, and we're executing that maneuver now. We're going to be just crossing inside the boundary of its largest moon, which we're not going to be landing on today. Today's target is Orith, which is really exciting because it's a small geyser moon with huge geysers that can be seen from orbit that are actually the source of Iores rings. You can see now that Iores has humongous rings that are not super typical for a terrestrial planet. It looks just like a gas giant from this altitude, but under those clouds is a densely mountainous, rocky surface that we're actually going to be exploring in part two of this video coming out next week. But today's mission is to Orith, like I said, the Shepherd Geyser Moon of Iores's Rings. So Orth was that small moon just outside the rings that was casting the shadow on Iorus just now. After we check out the sights from orbit, we're going to be setting a course to capture around Orth itself. So I've set it as my target and we have a fairly substantial uh, inclination difference. So I'm doing another inclination matching maneuver and warping ahead to complete that burn. We're really kind of getting close to this misty ring that the geysers of Orith are creating around Iores, which is pretty cool. We're going to see those up close, but I'm just lowering my orbit to intersect that of I of Orith. I Dude, it's going to be so hard to keep Orith and Iores apart for these next few videos. Like I said before, Orith is actually not that big. It looks much bigger than it is. I think it's only about 15 kilometers across, so it's a really small moon and you don't have to have a lot of fuel to explore it, which is pretty cool. And there's lots to see on the surface, so I highly recommend checking it out. I think it might be my favorite spot in the Aethera system by far. All right, time to capture around Orith. It's got a pretty low orbital velocity. We're only going like 28 meters per second. And there's our first look at the massive geysers of Orith. 
They seem to be timed in relation to the moon's orbit around Iores, which means that the water and ice from Oreth's subsurface ocean must be getting churned and squeezed out of the surface of Oreth by the tidal forces from Iores. This actually reminds me a lot of Enceladus, one of the moons of Saturn in real life that has similar geysers that create some of the rings of Saturn itself from the tidal forces from the larger planet that they're bound to. All right, now we can get ready to get our crew into one of the landers that we have attached to our cargo section of the ISV. And we've just detached from the KSS Bova. We're gonna do a quick retrograde burn to put us on a collision course with the surface. And we should be coming in fairly slowly with enough fuel to make a bunch of course corrections if needed. I'm aiming to land for the top of this plateau over here. That's going to be a pretty good landing spot, I think. You can see some of those geysers shooting off in the background. Uh, we're going to try to get to see some of those up close. Uh, since the gravity of Oreth is so low, we're going to be able to use our RCS jetpacks to travel fairly long distances without having to worry about fuel from the lander, so that's nice. We're going to get real close to one of these geyser fissures and check it out up close. Alright, inside the cockpit we've got our co-pilot there. And we're going to get out and put boots on the ground for the first time and plant a flag. And also check out what uh, the gravity is like. I'm a little concerned because uh, it's actually much lower than I thought it would be. It's kind of difficult to walk around when the gravity is so low, as you can see. So we're going to probably just have to taxi around this small, almost giant asteroid-like moon with just our jetpacks, it seems like. As is tradition, we're going to plant a flag to let everyone else know that we were here. And we're going to do some EVA experiments and take a surface sample. KSS2 has a fair amount of uh, science reports that are pretty cool to read if you guys want to read those. Look at that view. This is crazy. Like this is why I'm this is why I've been saying that Orth is my favorite spot in the Aethera system so far. We're going to try to head over to one of these giant geyser fissures. They seem to kind of align along these giant cracks in the crust of Orth. There are these giant fissures. I'm heading over to the largest one that's closest to me currently, and uh, it's huge. You guys, like, there's like this small mountain range, and you can see the scale of these things. They must reach kilometers into space, and uh, we're coming up on the edge of the fissure here. I think one of the biggest points to its credit though is the view of Iores from the skies of Oreth. It's just super awesome. Okay, I think we're gonna jump off the edge here. I wanna see what it looks like down at the bottom of the fissure or the giant space geyser, I guess. Alright you guys, that was pretty crazy, I didn't know what to say because words really didn't do it justice. But like, bravo to the KSS2 team, this place is awesome. You guys have to try it if you haven't already. Uh, Orith is awesome, my favorite object in the Aethera system so far. And uh, I'm going to head back to the lander now, and because the gravity is so low, I can just use my RCS jetpack just to fly over, basically, back over to where our lander was. And we're going to get on our way and rendezvous back up with the mothership in orbit. 
so we can carry on to Iores in the next video. But as I got closer to the lander, it did one of these things that sometimes happens when you have your uh, SAS turned on, but no one in the cockpit. It'll start to like spin really weirdly if you uh, enter its uh, physics range again. But I was able to climb back in as it was spinning around and get a hold of that lander that went rogue for a second there. And we're just going to check out what the sunsets look like on Orith as I like to do. We're going to get back inside the lander and rendezvous back with the mothership in orbit. We're about to take off. Just got to get strapped in to my seat here. So we're going to wait till it kind of passes overhead. It's on a slightly inclined orbit, so we are basically aligned with it right now. One thing I super love about the new deferred rendering update is just the quality of reflections on the surface. Like, look at the light from Iora is reflecting on the uh, icy ground of Orith. Super awesome. Okay, so I didn't even burn that long, but I'm already on an escape trajectory out of Orith. So I've just kind of set the mothership as my target and I'm just burning towards it essentially. I've just set it as my target on my map and I was able to force a flyby there with those nodes right on top of each other. So we should be docking within one orbit, uh, just a couple minutes and there it is in our sights. So we're just gonna get ready to dock this thing. The way I dock things in KSP is I kind of basically fly by my nav ball. It's kind of tricky to do it first, but the more you do it, uh, the easier it gets. I usually like align to the docking port and then set my mode to docking mode, which keeps me aligned with the docking port. No matter how much I, you know, RCS around, I'll always stay aligned. It makes it a lot easier. And that's going to be about it for today's video. If you guys enjoyed, make sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe if you want to see more KSP videos like this one. I've got awesome new missions coming up, like our SSTO landing on Iores, which is that big ringed thing in the distance there. So yeah, make sure to stay tuned for that, and I'll see you guys next time.